we'll move on to the next concept uh, called as pressure coefficient whenever we talk about coefficient we are talking about a dimensionless term now uh, the significance of coefficient of lift coefficient of drag normal uh, force coefficient and axial force coefficient we have discussed previously now to improve the understanding of aerodynamics we have introduced another coefficient called as coefficient of pressure or pressure coefficient now it is the ratio of the relative pressure with respect to the dynamic pressure right so with respect to a free stream velocity the coefficient of pressure tells at any point on the chord line on the surface of the air foil what is the pressure right so it relates the local pressure with the free stream pressure if you can see the graph we have drawn the coefficient of pressure from x by c 0 to x by c 1 what is this x by c can't i simply write chord length now you can pause the video here think about this i repeat the question on the x axis i have x by c rather than c x is nothing but the distance from the leading edge measured in the direction of chord and c is of course the chord length there is a possibility of i can replace x by c with c but why i am using x by c you can pause it here or think about it you can write your answer in the comment section below and then come back right hope you got the answer the reason is if i simply write c the chord length for various air foils the coefficient of pressure versus the chord length graph changes right so if i try to analyze minimum two air foils to finalize which air foil to involve in my design i have to compare the coefficient of pressure of two air foils if the x axis is different for different variables different air foils i cannot compare so to normalize any chord length to the value from 0 to 1 we are introducing the ratio x by c x by c eliminates the difficulty we had in analyzing various air foils of different chord length x by c always for any air foil for any chord length it always starts from 0 and ends at 1 so as you can observe in the graph the upper surface pressure coefficient is negative on the lower surface the pressure coefficient is uh, positive uh, for some distance it is uh, negative as well on the lower surface now in order to understand this graph first we have to understand what is pressure coefficient so the pressure coefficient equation is the ratio of the difference in local pressure to the free stream pressure to the dynamic pressure dynamic pressure all of you know till now we are using in lift drag normal force axial force half rho v square where rho or rho infinity represents the density of free stream air and v infinity represents the velocity of the free stream air now coming to the numerator p represents the local pressure at any point on the surface of airfoil whereas p infinity represents the free stream pressure right so in other words the coefficient of pressure relates the local pressure with that of the free stream pressure with respect to the dynamic pressure right it's a very interesting concept and using this we can do the analysis for various air foils for different chord lengths right moving on as you can see mo at most of the points on the upper surface the coefficient of pressure is negative again another challenge for you you can pause the video here draw the diagram write the equation and try to analyze why the coefficient of pressure is negative on the upper side and on the lower side it is positive up to certain distance okay hopefully you arrived at the solution now the reason on the upper surface 
the coefficient of pressure is negative is because when the air stream enters the airfoil section on the upper surface the pressure keeps on reduces in other words the pressure energy is converted into the increase in velocity if pressure is decreasing velocity will increase based on bernoulli's principle right so the local pressure on the upper surface keeps on decreasing with respect to the free stream pressure right so p in the numerator is less than p infinity so when you subtract a higher number from a lower number the result is negative value right so that is the reason why coefficient of pressure is negative on the upper surface so this particular uh, pressure coefficient equation is applicable only for low mach number right so that means what it is applicable only for incompressible flow the difference between compressible and incompressible flow we have already discussed in other words a compressible flow is a flow where the density varies at each and every point right so the density is not constant in a compressible flow whereas in an incompressible flow the density remains constant throughout at all the points right so that is a basic difference between compressible and incompressible flows why this is only applicable for incompressible flow is the moment compressibility comes into picture we have to consider the prandtl glauert conditions which tells that the coefficient of pressure is proportional to the mach number right if you could draw the graph between the mach number and the coefficient of pressure it looks like this when i say compressible flow that means any mach number greater than 0.33 and less than the transonic region that is from where uh, 0.7 or 0.8 starts right so this particular range is compressible range and beyond 0.33 although it is air we consider it to be incompressible right that is a separate analysis what we have seen in the first module why the mach number above 0.33 is considered as the compressible flow so according to this prandtl glauert rule the equation tells that the coefficient of pressure is nothing but the coefficient of pressure when the mach number is zero that is almost a constant value and in the denominator we have under root of 1 minus m infinity square where m infinity is the free stream mach number right so what happens if you observe the graph carefully up to 0.3 the variation of cp that is the coefficient of pressure is almost zero is almost same whether it is 0.1 0.2 or 0.3 but beyond 0.3 uh, 0.33 to be precise the coefficient of pressure starts varying now by how much it is varying that is defined by this prandtl glauert rule in order to understand the concept in a much better way i have given a simple problem it states that the pressure at a point on the wing of an airplane is 7.58 into 10 power 4 newton per meter square the airplane is flying at a velocity of 70 meter per second at conditions associated with the standard altitude of 2000 meter or roughly around 2 kilometers calculate the pressure coefficient at that point on the wing right where the pressure is 7.58 into 10 power 4 newton per meter square so you can pause the video right now and try to solve this problem using all the concepts we have studied previously and come back i hope you got the answer it's a very simple problem let's see what is the solution for this problem always uh, i suggest you to write down the given data in this particular problem i have uh, got the pressure at a point on the wing surface that i represent it by p which is equal to 7.58 to 10 power 4 newton per meter square then uh, free stream velocity is given which is 70 meter per second and the aircraft is flying at an altitude of 2000 meter that is at 2 kilometers now recalling the equation for coefficient of pressure 
which is Cp is equal to P minus P infinity by Q infinity. Right? Q infinity is nothing but the dynamic pressure. So now, uh, how we got the values of P infinity and rho infinity, we have discussed already in the first module. Uh, how to calculate the temperature, pressure and density at any altitude. Let's say from 0 to 11 kilometers we consider as troposphere and from 11 to 25 kilometers we consider it as stratosphere. So for these two regions we have already derived equations for variation in pressure, temperature and density. So using those principles I have calculated uh, the atmospheric free stream pressure and free stream we have got all the values, I just have to simply substitute and the CP value I got is minus 1.5. The coefficient of pressure value what we got is a negative value. So immediately the thing that comes to our mind is this, this point must be on the upper surface because of two reasons. One is CP is negative and the second reason due to which CP is negative itself is the point uh, at which the pressure is less than the free stream pressure right moving on to the next problem uh, i have here consider an airfoil mounted in a low speed subsonic wind tunnel the flow velocity in the test section is 30 meter per second and the conditions are standard sea level if the pressure at a point on the airfoil is 100 kilopascals 100.6 kilopascal what is the pressure coefficient Right? It's a very simple problem and I hope you guys can do it at home. Kindly discuss the solution in the comment section. So I will not, I'm not going to solve this problem here. It's a pretty simple problem. Try it out. Right? Moving on to the next discussion of how to calculate lift coefficient if I know the all the values of pressure coefficient both on the upper surface and lower surface. Right? <clears throat> so it's a very uh, interesting concept now the purpose of analyzing coefficient of pressure is to finally arrive at coefficient of lift right which is very important in aerodynamic analysis so as an aerodynamicist your aim is to get the coefficient of lift value as high as possible right so that is the aim of an aerodynamicist so we will try to understand if I know at all the points the coefficient of pressure, can I able to get uh, the value of coefficient of lift of the particular airfoil for the given angle of attack. Remember this, the coefficient of lift varies with angle of attack, right? So whenever you make a statement regarding coefficient of lift, you should always include for a given angle of attack, we are going to calculate the coefficient of lift for uh, the known coefficient of pressure right uh, the derivation is pretty simple i'm not going to go through the derivation which is readily available in uh, famous textbooks like anderson and uh, houghton and carpenter so you can go through it if you are interested but it's a pretty simple uh, derivation which leads to an equation between coefficient of lift and coefficient of pressure in this particular equation Coefficient of lift is equal to 1 by C, that is the chord length, integral of coefficient of pressure on the lower surface minus coefficient of pressure on the upper surface from leading edge to trailing edge. The limits are from 0 to C, that is chord length. And integrating with respect to uh, in the direction of x, so that is by dx. <clears throat> so this is an interesting equation which relates the coefficient of pressure with the coefficient of lift. Moving on, the compressibility correction factor for lift coefficient. Just now we saw the compressibility correction factor for coefficient of pressure. So similarly, for coefficient of lift, at lower speeds, the coefficient of lift almost remains constant. Whereas as the Mach number increases, when it enters into the compressible flow regime that is more than 0.33 we need a different equation to calculate the coefficient of lift and again uh, just like in how we calculated coefficient of pressure for higher Mach numbers higher subsonic Mach numbers similarly we are going to use a Prandtl-Glorit rule to get 
the compressible coefficient of lift uh, equation. So that is given by uh, CL0 by under root of 1 minus m infinity square. Now CL0 is a coefficient of lift which remains constant in the compressible region for a given angle of attack. So this you have to remember this coefficient of lift variation with Mach number is for one particular angle of attack. The angle of attack changes, the curve changes. The coefficient of lift at uh, zero Mach number, that changes, right? So what is very important observation here? Compressible flow coefficient lift is inversely proportional to under root of one minus m infinity square, right? So this is a very important observation so till now what we have studied is we have derived equation for coefficient of pressure and transform and we got another equation for coefficient of pressure for compressible reason then we moved on to calculate coefficient of lift from coefficient of pressure for lower subsonic values then we used prandtl goret rule to get the coefficient of lift value in compressible region Right? So these four equations you have to remember till now. So in order to understand these concepts uh, in a much clearer way, let's solve a problem. So the problem is like this. Consider a Naka 4412 airfoil at an angle of attack of 4 degree. If the free stream Mach number is 0.7, what is the lift coefficient? Now, if in the question, if the Mach number is less than 0.33, Directly we have the graphs for the given airfoil, we will get the value of coefficient of lift directly. But in this case, the Mach number is 0.7, which is in the higher subsonic region, which is nothing but the compressible region. Right? So for this, uh, let's see how to solve this problem. So first step, the given data, Naka 4412 series. First digit represents the percentage of uh, maximum camber in terms of uh, chord and the second digit represents the position of maximum camber and third and fourth digit uh, represents the maximum thickness in terms of percentage of chord right so from the uh, graph a coefficient of lift versus angle of attack so for this particular Nanka airfoil at 4 degrees we get the value of coefficient of lift as 0.83 now if you go to appendix D in Anderson, introduction to aeronautics, so you get the variation of coefficient of lift with angle of attack for various Naka airfoils, right? So this is one is standard airfoil, so double four one two. So from there we have got the value of coefficient of lift as 0.83. Now at this point I would like to uh, mention that the only way to calculate coefficient of lift is via experimentation, right? There is no other way to calculate. So till now, uh, scientists and researchers have done extensive research on most of the airfoil shapes and the results are available readily. For this particular airfoil, at this angle of attack, the coefficient of lift is 0.83. But this 0.83 is not the answer because this particular airfoil is moving at a Mach number of 0.7 which comes in the compressible region, right? So let's uh, write the prandtl goret rule for coefficient of lift that is CL0 by under root of 1 minus m infinity square. CL0 value we know 0.83 and also the Mach number value we know 0.7. So if I substitute both the values, the coefficient of lift for this particular airfoil at Mach 0.7, I got it as 1.16, right? So this proves our previous analysis, the graph what we saw, where the coefficient of lift increases with increasing Mach number. 